everybody. How are you all? Are you all okay? I hope so. This week is really exciting because it's World Book Day on a Thursday. So we have a brilliant story to share with you. And I've got a clue here. My, my dolly from the reading corner, Daisy, has dressed up for World Book Day. Can you see who she's dressed up as? Who is she dressed up as? Yes. It's Paddington Bear. She's got the Paddington Bear costume on. She's got a little label here. Do you all know Paddington Bear? Some of you do, some of you might not. Well, don't worry if you don't know who Paddington Bear is because I've got the story to share with you now. So I'm going to pop Daisy to one side. She's going to enjoy the story. She's ready. She's dressed for World Book Day. What are you going to wear on World Book Day? Have you got a favourite character from a story? Have a little think. I'm not sure what I'm going to dress up as. You know I like to dress up. I'll have to have a good think, won't I? So here's the story of Paddington by Michael Bond. Mr and Mrs Brown first met Paddington on a railway platform. In fact, that was how he came to have such an unusual name for a bear, because Paddington was the name of the station. The Browns were waiting to meet their daughter, Judy, when Mr Brown noticed something small and furry near the left luggage office. It looks like a bear, he said. A bear, repeated Mrs Brown, on Paddington station. Don't be silly, Henry. There can't be. But Mr. Brown was right. It was sitting on an old leather suitcase marked Wanted on Voyage. And as they drew near, it stood up and politely raised its hat. Good afternoon, it said. May I help you? It's very kind of you, said Mr. Brown. But as a matter of fact, we were wondering if we could help you. He's a very polite bear, he's got good manners, hasn't he, Paddington? You're a very small bear, said Mrs Brown. Where are you from? The bear looked around carefully before replying. Darkest Peru. I'm not really supposed to be here at all. I'm a stowaway. You don't mean to say you've come all the way from South America on your own, exclaimed Mrs Brown. Wherever did you, whatever did you do for food? Unlocking the suitcase, the bear took out an almost empty glass jar. I ate marmalade, he said. Bears like marmalade. Do you like marmalade? I do. I like marmalade on toast. He likes marmalade sandwiches. Have you ever made a marmalade sandwich? Mrs Brown looked at the label around the bear's neck. It said quite simply, Please look after this bear. Thank you. Can you see the label there? Oh, Henry, she cried. We can't leave him here all by himself. There's no knowing what might happen to him. Can't he come home and stay with us? Stay with us, repeated Mr Brown nervously. He looked down at the bear. Er, uh, would you like that? He asked. That is, he added hastily, if you have nothing planned. Oh yes, replied the bear. I would like that very much. I've nowhere to go and everyone seems in such a hurry. And that's because he's in London. London's very busy and everyone's always in a rush. See them there at the station. That settles it, said Mrs Brown. Now you must be thirsty after your journey. Mr Brown can get you some tea while I go and meet our daughter, Judy. But Mary, said Mr Brown, we don't even know its name. Mrs Brown thought for a moment. I know, she said. We'll call him Paddington after the station. Paddington! The bear tested it several times to make sure. It sounds very important. Mr Brown tried it out next. Follow me, Paddington, he said. I'll take you to the snack bar. Oh, I think Paddington's a great name for you. What do you call your bears? Have you got a favourite? Mr Brown was as good as his word. Paddington had never seen so many snacks on one tray and didn't know which to try first. He was so hungry and thirsty, he climbed up 
on the table to get a better look. Mr Brown turned away, pretending he had tea with a bear on Paddington Station every day of his life. I think that must be a bit strange. I've never had tea with a bear at a station. In fact, I've never had tea with a bear anywhere before, really, until I have my teddy bear's picnic with my own teddies at home. Henry, cried Mrs Brown when she arrived with Judy, what are you doing to that poor bear? Paddington jumped up to raise his hat and in his haste, he trod on a strawberry tart, skidded on the cream and fell over backwards into his cup of tea. Oh no, can you see? What a disaster. I think we'd better go before anything else happens, said Mr Brown. Judy took hold of Paddington's paw. Come along, she said. We'll take you home and you can meet Mrs Bird and my brother Jonathan. Mr Brown led the way to a waiting taxi. Number 32 Windsor Gardens, please, he said. The driver stared at Paddington. Bears is extra, he growled. Sticky bears is twice as much and make sure none of it comes off on my interior. It was clean when I set out this morning. Oh dear, look, Paddington is covered in the jam and cream. So he is a sticky bear. The sun was shining as they drove out of the station and there were cars and big red buses everywhere. Paddington waved to some people waiting at a bus stop and several of them waved back. It was all very friendly. Do you wave to people sometimes? Do you wave back? Do they wave back? Hope so. It's polite to wave back, isn't it? Paddington tapped the taxi driver on his shoulder. It isn't a bit like darkest Peru, he announced. The man jumped at the sound of Paddington's voice. Cream, he said bitterly, cream and jam all over my coat. He slid the little window behind him shut. Oh dear, Henry, murmured Mrs Brown. I wonder if we're doing the right thing. Oh dear, Paddington's got more dirty. Do you think they've done the right thing taking Paddington home? I do, it's a kind thing to do, isn't it? If you see a little bear stranded. Fortunately, before anyone had time to answer, they arrived at Windsor Gardens and Judy helped Paddington onto the pavement. Now you're going to meet Mrs Bird, she said. She looks after us. She's a bit fierce at times, but she doesn't really mean it. I'm sure you'll like her. Paddington felt his knees begin to wobble. I'm sure I shall if you say so, he replied. The thing is, will she like me? What do you think? Do you think Mrs Bird will like Paddington? I do. Paddington's cute. Goodness gracious, exclaimed Mrs Bird. What have you got there? It's not a what, said Judy. It's a bear called Paddington and he's coming to stay with us. A bear, said Mrs Bird as Paddington raised his hat. Well, he has good manners. I'll say that for him. Would you like it if your grown-ups brought a bear home one day? Yeah, if they were as cute as Paddington, I would. Not a big grizzly bear, not a scary bear. But if they were like Paddington here, I think I'd quite like it. I'm afraid I stepped on a jam tart by mistake, said Paddington. I can see that, said Mrs Bird. You'd better have a bath before you're very much older. Judy can, take, can turn it on for you. I dare say you'll be wanting some marmalade too. I think she likes you, whispered Judy. Oh, it looks like he's going to have some fun now. Paddington had never been in a bathroom before. And while the water was running, he made himself at home. First of all, he tried writing his new name in the steam on the mirror. Then he used Mr Brown's shaving foam to draw a map of Peru on the floor. It wasn't until a drip landed on his head that he remembered what he was supposed to be doing. He soon discovered that getting into a bath is one thing, but it's quite another matter getting out again, especially when it's full of soapy water. Oh dear. It is hard to get out of a soapy bath, but I think it's really hard if you're a cuddly bear. Paddington tried calling out, help! At first in a quiet voice, so not to disturb anyone, then very loudly, help, help. When that didn't work, he began bailing the water out with his hat, 
but the hat had several holes in it and his map of Peru soon turned into a sea of foam. Suddenly, Jonathan and Judy burst into the bathroom and lifted a dripping Paddington onto the floor. Thank goodness you're all right, cried Judy. We heard you calling out. Fancy making such a mess, said Jonathan admiringly. You should have pulled the plug out. Oh, said Paddington. I never thought of that. Oh dear, well I suppose he's not really had a bath before, has he? So he wouldn't know. I like the way they've dried him off with the hairdryer. When Paddington came downstairs, he looked so clean, no one could possibly be cross with him. His fur was all soft and silky, his nose gleamed and his paws had lost all traces of the jam and cream. He looks much cleaner, doesn't he? The Browns made room for him in a small armchair and Mrs Bird bought him a pot of tea and a plate of hot buttered toast and marmalade. Oh, I bet he's really happy. Now, said Mrs Brown, you must tell us all about yourself. I'm sure you must have had lots of adventures. I have, said Paddington earnestly. Things are always happening to me. I'm that sort of bear. He settled back into the armchair. I was brought up by my Aunt Lucy in darkest Peru, he began. But she had to go into a home for retired bears in Lima. He closed his eyes thoughtfully and a hush fell over the room as everyone waited expectantly. That means it was nice and quiet. They were all waiting to hear about darkest Peru and where he lived. Oh dear, after a while, when nothing happened, they began to get restless. Mr. Brown co tried coughing. Then he reached across and poked Paddington. Well, I never, he said. I do believe he's fast asleep. After all that's happened to him, said Mrs. Brown, is it any wonder? And there poor Paddington is, he's exhausted. The end. Did you enjoy that story? I did. I love the story of Paddington. So this week we're really going to be thinking about Paddington, what he's like, what does he like? Can we learn some facts, do you think, about Paddington? Maybe we could think about some interesting facts like what does he like to eat? Hmm. Yes, he likes to eat marmalade sandwiches. We could think about where was he from? He's not from Market Deeping, is he? And he's not from London either. He ends up in London, but where did he come from? Yes, darkest Peru. I think we could maybe make a fact file or something about Paddington this week. That might be fun. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'll go and get Daisy so she can say goodbye to you. Say bye to Daisy. Daisy's all ready for World Book Day. Oh, hang on. She... Oh, okay. She wants to know, who are you dressing up as for World Book Day? Can you let us know? Maybe you could send a photo of yourselves in to us so we can see who you dressed up as. You could do that, couldn't you? You could even write down, I am Paddington. If you're Paddington, you could write, I am a princess. I am a unicorn. Who else could you dress up as? Well, there's so many. I am Stickman, we've seen Stickman in the past. I'm the Hungry Caterpillar. Oh, there are so many brilliant books. I can't wait to see who you're dressed up as. Bye for now.